Hey, a couple of viruses are on the radar of health officials right now. Let's uh, welcome in infectious diseases expert, Dr. Isaac Bogosh, who joins us this morning to discuss. Dr. Bogosh, always good to see you. Good morning. Let's begin with the first one, which is a transmitted by insects and is popping up in places never seen before. What can you tell us about this? And have we seen it yet here in Canada? Yeah, this is called Oropuche virus. Many people probably haven't heard of this one before. This was discovered in Trinidad and Tobago in 1955. And there's been you know, small outbreaks of this, mostly in tropical areas of South America over the last several decades. What's interesting is this year there's much more of it than before. And it's popped up in places where we haven't seen it before, for example, there was a reasonably sized outbreak of this in Cuba. Travelers to Cuba, travelers to Brazil have returned to their home countries with this infection. It's sort of like dengue, fever, uh, muscle aches and pains, headache. Fortunately, the vast majority of people get better on their own. Uh, and it's, as you point out, it's transmitted by biting insect midges and, and some types of mosquitoes can transmit it. Best to seek medical care before you travel to see if there's any things you can do to stay healthy and maintain healthy while you're away. Always a good idea to use insect repellent while traveling, especially in these areas, because it's not just going to protect you from this, but other nasty biting critters that can transmit other infections. People can have a healthy, safe and happy and happy trip. All right. Uh, what Canada has seen is MPOX. In fact, Toronto actually reporting a spike in cases, Dr. Bogosh. Yeah, certainly you've seen more MPOX here in Toronto and, and throughout Ontario so far in this 2024 calendar year than combined throughout 2023. Just a reminder that this infection, while maybe forgotten by some, is not gone. And again, I'm saying this with love, with respect, with no moralization, with no stigmatization. But in, in Canada, this infection, over 96% of, of uh, people with this infection are in the men who have sex with men community. That's why the public health messaging, the vaccination campaigns, the, all of that is really targeted towards that community. And a huge credit to the leadership in the men who, have, men who have sex with men community because they've been fully integrated in the public health response and the messaging and getting the word out to the community and ensuring the uh, vaccine clinics are in areas where people feel more comfortable going. And, uh, and that's, that's the right way forward. This is not uh, um, uh, equal risk across the population. Certainly there are m a much higher risk in, in men who have sex with men, especially people with multiple sexual partners and in sex workers. And that's why we've seen the targeted public health campaign that's been rather effective. All right, finally, Dr. Bogosh, we wanted to ask you about this. A new study that is reportedly taking place at the University of Calgary where so-called uh, poop pills they're thinking could improve mental health. Uh, what's the story behind this? Well, <laughs> it's hard to keep a straight face because you think poop pills and mental health probably shouldn't be mentioned in the same sentence, and some people wouldn't even bring up poop pills in any sentence. But the, the technical term is a fecal microbiota transplant, where basically you get uh, the fecal material of other people somehow into your intestine. Just you know, erase the gross factor for a second, this is a well-trodden path to help cure uh, an infection called Clostridium difficile, which causes a very severe and possibly dangerous diarrhea. Uh, it's not the first line of therapy, but if we have resistant uh, or recurrent Clostridium difficile diarrhea, this fecal microbiota transplant is very effective. Now, are there other benefits of this? Who knows? I think if you're going to start doing this type of procedure on people, you have to have the highest quality evidence and a high burden of evidence to say that it has other positive benefits. I think it's also important to keep an open mind. It's just premature to say that it has other positive benefits like mental health benefits. Okay. All of a sudden, my cup of coffee, after looking at that jar, the first image uh, is not looking as appetizing mm -hmm. anymore. But Dr. Bogosh, thank you so much for that update. <laughs> My Good pleasure. Have a great day, guys.